All right, so I got another video for you guys. This one I can't take credit for. I found it on YouTube uh, <clears throat> from a guy in Florida. I can't remember his name right now, but the point is he's making fish bites. Well, he's making his own version of fish bites. I'm going to take and make a, something like what he's made, but I'm going to do my own little thing. So what you're going to need is unflavored gelatin. I got three packs, but I may not use all them. You're going to need a half a cup, measuring cup at least. This is a half a cup. He does it a half a cup at a time, but I'm going to make a cup's worth. Some sort of flavoring. I got the yum because that's all I had. I tried to find gulp, but Walmart was out. Uh, I don't have, I have like a half of this. I would like to do the whole thing in this, but today this is just how it's going to be, so I can try it out. Now what I'm going to do to make my own version is I'm going to add some sort of glitter, what other, whatever color you want. I, this is just what I've got. So I think, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, you can make uh, the worms out of this, like a, like a gulp worm or whatever. The fish bites, you can make. Um, little swim baits that can go on your hook. It just all depends on what you want to do with when you pour it. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead and get basically a half a cup twice, so a cup. Okay. And that's basically what that looks like. So this is going to be that color with some sort of, um, what do you call it, glittered. But first of all, we have to make sure that we go up to the half a cup and then another cup of water. I mean another half a cup of water, sorry. So which makes a total of one cup. Because I'm making double portions compared to what he used. Millie, no. Crazy dog. Okay, so, woo, that stuff stinks. Half a cup, and then one more half a cup. Now this is harmless, because it's, uh, you know, made out of food products, other than the, the yum. Get the little thing out of here. I'm at the door. You're going to need three tablespoons of gelatin. So per half a cup of liquid, three tablespoons of gelatin. So here's a tablespoon. Here's a tablespoon. I'm going to open this up because I don't know how much one of these little packs. It comes in a pack of uh, four. Let's see how much these, they might be a tablespoon apiece. We'll see. Yep. So they're exactly, these are exactly a tablespoon of piece. So we're going to need, since I've got a whole cup of stuff in there, making double batch, I'm going to need six of these unflavored gelatins. So six packets, because it comes in tablespoon size packets, obviously. Two. Four. We'll do two here. Five and six. But six tablespoons for a cup of liquid. Now we're going to bring that to a boil. Yeah, it's going to smell a little bit because of that yum stuff in there. But, it'll be good for the bacon. Let's go 
ahead and get this mixed. Now see how thick this is already becoming before I even get it to a boil. Okay, so it's coming up to a boil. I'm making sure the sides are all wiped down. You really don't have to let it sit there and boil too long, just enough to dissolve everything. Get that gelatin broke down. Now, because this is a red color, now if you get the other, uh, like gulp or anything like that, you can get the clear scent, but this is all I had. So either I'm gonna put the silver flakes I'm thinking if that would, that might shine through. Of course, you got your purple. That would be real good. So, hmm. I think I might try a little bit of both of them to bring it out. Okay, so it's boiling. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. And I'm going to stir it a few more times. Now, it would be good if you have one of them silicone molds. But I could not find one so that it could just pop out of this. But I could not find one. So, unfortunately, I'm going to be stuck with no silicone mold. I'm going to go ahead and take this off the heat. And let me tell you, it stinks. And I'm going to add some of these flakes. Just a few. I don't want to, like, over-darken the... stuff these you can add a little bit more because it will pop the color I'll go ahead and steer that in Ooh, yeah smelly smelly and then and then we're just going to pour it right in here you make it as thick as you want. Like I said, batches can be made either way you want it. Oh, that's nice. Now, <clears throat> I'm go ahead and rinse this out real fast. You're going to hang on. Okay, so you're going to pop that, look at that sparkles, you're going to pop that into the refrigerator. The longer you let it set, the harder it gets. A couple days, he suggests a couple of days, uh, but he'll show you, he shows you in like in an hour that it's pretty thick, so I'm going to do the same. Sorry about the water in the background, I'm trying to rinse that pan out as fast as possible. <laughs> So I'll be back as soon as that hardens up. Okay. All right, this is uh, the next day. I actually let it sit in the fridge for a long time. I've been cutting on it. This is what it turned out. Look at that. That's crazy, guys. Flimsy. If you had like worm molds, you could you could actually take in a pour this into your worm molds and leave it in the fridge overnight and actually make like gulp worms and stuff that are shaped like worms. I'm cutting these into chunks, different sizes, because uh, I'm going to just throw it on my hook and see what I catch. You can, if you had um, little uh, grub molds, you could put it in the grub mold. That would be crazy making your own grubs now the thing is is yeah this stuff look at that and he said the guy that i watched said that the longer you leave it in the fridge the harder it gets he said it will actually turn out to be like hard plastic 
but we don't want to do that because we want it to to be able to put on hook and stuff but um what was i going to say i don't even know what it's going to say now who knows sometimes i'm just going to cut these in chunks and put them in a baggie i don't even know what i was going to say oh this disintegrates eventually in the water uh, it takes a long time though but you put this on a hook and just have it sitting there oh it stinks too like that stuff i'm leaving these long because i was thinking about like, making a flappers put them on a hook put the hook right through it right there and let it just flap that'd be kind of cool so I'm, and we'll make some chunks Like I said, you can actually put these in molds and make the uh, jigs and I mean, yeah, make you a mold for your jig. Grub, a grub tail or a swimming fish, whatever. Now, the guy also said you could put a cheesecloth in this. What you do is you pour your first little layer um, cut a piece of cheesecloth the same size, put it down in there, and then pour on top of it. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to make this even sturdier so that a hook can't rip through it, or if a fish pulls on it, it's not going to get, you know, crazed there. Anywho, so I'm just going to cut these in strips like this, and then I'm going to take this one and make little nibs. Or like a bluegill and stuff. Again, this stuff has to be refrigerated. You're gonna keep it for a long period of time. Like right now, it's winter time, and it will dry up if you don't uh, use it. You know how them go up uh, little uh, swimmers? What are they called? They look like little fish. Um, they're all pliable like this but if you leave them open and out they shrivel up and dry up well this is what this would do anyway just want y'all to see that now you make it as thick as you want these are just my first try so I figured and look at them look at them glitters in that I figured for my first try it'd be fine <laughs> 